back to my small garage machine shop. So, a lot of things on the table. I have so many things I want to tell you. It's going to be a great video, guys. So let me tell you what we're going to do. We have new tool holders that we're going to take a look at. We have this Acme nut in the middle, which is actually for a future video, but that's something I want to kind of give you guys a little glimpse at today. This boring bar on the right-hand side of the screen, a monster, and I'm so excited about that. This boring bar holder from a certain company that I went with for a particular reason, so we're going to talk about that. And the thing I'm most excited about is firing up the old pacemaker and throwing some of these CNMG inserts in there and doing an actual test. One pass each, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to do the ASCO BYN, the Forma SPs, and against a new mystery brand from Amazon that uh, I just saw for the first time recently and I took a chance on it. So we're going to look at all that. And as a bonus, we're going to look at the VFD install on the pacemaker real quick. I'm going to show you the DRO. And I have a shop crane I'm working on that's in progress. And it's functional, okay? But I want to show you that. And that's going to be something that's going to be, you know, a separate video. But I just want to give you guys a peek at it. All right, so stick around, guys. I promise this one's going to be worth it. Okay, guys, so first up here, we're going to talk about the tool holders. These are a brand we've heard of, ASZLBYM, available on Amazon, $80, four-piece set with this handy little case here. Pretty nice, okay? Um, it's the WNMG, CNMG, threading tool, and TNMG. Three-quarter, 80 bucks. All the information is on the side of a tool which is a step in the right direction for them. Okay, that's really nice. I know it probably doesn't show up very well on the camera. I apologize for that. But it's it's very readable. And uh, there's the Shars one. Now, you can see, you get an extra half inch on these ASELBYM ones. Why is that nice? Well, for me, I'm able to get that third screw tightened down in my CA tool holder, which is nice. You can see the mark right here, I hope. That's the third screw, which normally, with the Shars tool, I cannot tighten that one down. So, really nice. Um, now, this is the older version of the tool here. These are the 5 8 ones, which I've talked about before, and these things have been great. They're not pretty, they're not gonna win any beauty pageants, but they really are a solid tool to get into the game with the inserts, okay? Um, now, I will tell you that the inserts that are in these tools, these ASEO BYM, are different than the ones that I got in the packaging with these tools, okay? So that might be something for a future video as well. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for this, guys. I don't think that I went wrong here. If anything changes, I'll definitely update you guys. But so far, very pleased with it. Okay, guys, so next up here, we've got this Shars tool, inch and a half, and that's a six inch scale there, by 14 inch boring bar that uses a CNMG insert. So, this thing I purchased because the price was right and I really wanted a bigger boring bar. Who wouldn't? And we have this boring bar holder also from Shars. Now the interesting thing about this, the ones that were on Amazon for CA tool holders that I saw all had a max capacity without the bushing of one and a quarter. So one inch width, one and a quarter without. The Shars tool one, and now they're calling this heavy duty. Now I don't know if that's the difference, um, is inch and a quarter with the bushing and inch and a half without. Now it was a little more, it was about $20 more. It was about $40 for the, the, uh, you know, the regular Chinese brand one, I forget the name of the company that made it, and it was 60 for the Shars one. So I decided it was worth the extra money to get the bigger bar, um, and I figured that, you know, in the future, I'm gonna be glad. All right, so this is, again, Shars quality stuff, it's always, it's always good. They got all the information there on the side. The, the, the finish on it is absolutely beautiful. It's not much to be said about it, guys. It's a great company. It really is. Um, I'm really glad I went with this as well. This is the, uh, of course, the boring bar holder. And you can see the bushing in there, all right? So that's inch and a quarter now. We remove the bushing, we have inch and a half. Okay, guys, so I think this is the part of the video that I am most excited about the actual testing of these. So what we're looking at is we have three different manufacturers inserts. They're all CNMG 431. All right, so let's talk about pricing real quick. 
So on the left here, these guys here, okay, are the ASELBYM inserts. Now I've talked about these many times. They work out to be $13.28 for 10. So crazy affordable, right? In the middle, we have the Format SPs, also available on Amazon. These work out to be $35.99 for a pack of 10. So again, still nothing crazy. Now these Actex, okay, these are $68.08 for a pack of 10 on Amazon. So I actually, I had some issues with these ASEL BYM inserts, okay? They started chipping on me. And it was in the pacemaker, and I thought, you know what, maybe the tool's not on center. I was facing at the time. So I checked it, and I flipped the insert, and it chipped. And I checked it again, and it chipped. You know, I just, it kept going. Then I started just doing regular turning, and it lasted a little bit better, but again, in the end, it chipped. So I got frustrated. I reached in the old bin. I grabbed some of the, these Forma SP inserts, and I threw them in there. I changed nothing. Okay, and the problem went away. So I don't know if there's some sort of change in their metallurgy, what they're doing, whether it's just a bad batch. I, I'm not sure on that. Um, but that's what prompted me to make the videos. I wanted to share this with you guys. So let me uh, jump over to these Actex here. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about what the description is on Amazon. The company was established by an ex- Sandvik expert employing 1,200 people in the production of cutting tools using the same exact technologies and equipment as Sandvik's. Our products are widely recognized as high-end by European and Asian customers. The business has produced over 29 million inserts last year. We, we entered the U.S. market in 2022 providing premium quality inserts with unbeatable prices to our fellow Americans is our priority. So when I read that, I thought, okay. Let me, let me give these a shot. So uh, so we're going to do some testing. We're going to throw them in the machine. We're going to turn some steel. And we're going to see if it's worth spending the extra money. All right. So I got you guys set up over here on the old pacemaker. Hope the view is okay. This is the first time setting the camera up here. So hopefully, uh, you know, guys, give me some pointers if there's something I could do better for the view. But uh, as far as I can tell for this, this is going to be all right. All right, so what I think we'll do is we're going to run 615 RPMs. We're going to do 20 thousandths, okay, off the piece. I'm sorry, 10 thousandths depth of cut, 20 thousandths off the piece. We're going to be running at 5 thousandths per revolution feed rate. And uh, we'll start with the cheapest, which is going to be the ASEL BYM. We'll move to the Forma SP. And then lastly, we'll try the Actec version. All right, so I think this is going to be interesting stuff. I'm not going to go real in depth on things here. Uh, I'm just going to, you know, give you guys a quick peek at you know, what the inserts do. And, uh, and in a later video, if you guys would like, we'll do some, some more testing of these. All right. So let's get things underway here. All right. So here goes ASZLBYM up first. Okay, not terrible. Looks worse on camera. It's it's smooth. I would call that acceptable. All right, so let me switch the insert over and uh, let's see if we can compare here. All right, next up here, Forma SP, same RPM, same speed. Wow.
All right, well, I would call that pretty, pretty significant. Uh, the finish looks much shinier, much smoother. Um, you know, just definitely a step up. Let's try the Actec. All right, here goes for the Actec. Alright, well I would say not as big of a difference clearly uh, between the Forma and the Actec, but still an improvement. So I think it might be worth going into more detail on these and seeing if we can push them to their limit. Um, it seems like the ASCL BYM inserts just aren't shearing the metal like they should. So uh, at least that's what I'm hearing. Uh, so anyway, interesting stuff there. Okay, guys, so here it is. We've got the uh, the shop crane I've been working on. So, nothing crazy. Uh, this is a Harbor Freight engine stand that I kind of modified. Didn't buy any extra steel. And I combined that with a truck bed crane from uh, Amazon. So, all in. Well, I'm not going to go over price and everything right now. I just wanted to give you guys a quick peek at it. So, there it is in its folded position. Okay. And uh, let me show you something here that's interesting. I have it. It's going to be Milwaukee. 12 volt powered, which that's how I've been using it. It's been working out great. And I have a counter weight here, all right, on the back. So that's nice. And uh, I'm gonna change the caster so the front swivel, so I'll be able to kind of push it around a little bit easier. Um, but let me open it up and I'll show you what it looks like in that form. Okay, so here it is in its open form. And you can see the footprint is fairly small. Um, I, I am very limited on space here between the two machines. And I'm sorry guys, the garage is a little bit of a mess right now. Um, but anyway, here we got the Milwaukee battery. Okay, so that's an adapter purchased on Amazon. So that's uh, that works out wonderfully. So it's essentially rechargeable. And uh, like I said, I got the engine stand on the bottom. Okay, so this piece here, I'll, I'll kind of give you guys a little. This piece here was welded here in the center. Okay, and it came up here for a place to mount the motor. And I cut that off and I used that for that, that support in the back there. All right, and uh, a little counterbalance there, a little counterweight in the back, just welded a piece of pipe on that. And uh, it seems to work out well. So really, really excited about this. I'll give you guys a little, it's got a little control here and we can, we can, uh, you know, raise and lower our, you know, plenty of power. I actually removed the chuck off the uh, pacemaker with it and it worked out wonderfully. So, uh, so just a, kind of a sneak peek on this, guys. I'm going to do a whole video on this um, when it's complete. I actually got a remote control for it that I'm going to wire up also so with a little key fob so I can kind of, I don't have to have that wire hanging out uh, over the machine or whatever. And I have some other surprises too uh, kind of in store. So we're going to, you know, like I said, it'll be a separate video. I just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek. Okay, so. I almost forgot. I wanted to share the DRO and the VFD setup here real quick with you guys. So DRO is mounted up there. All right, here's the, the scale on the side here. Still have to make a guard for it. All right, that's that. And then back here is the, the VFD. And then I did the control panel here. So we have the e-stop switch on the bottom, forward reverse on top, and then the speed control knob in the middle there. All right, guys, that's going to wrap things up for today's video. Can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys taking the time to come in and join me. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. It's appreciated. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll catch you next time around. Take care.